Welcome back to our Naturally Vincy family. We're so appreciative of you. Thank you for joining us for, for another video. Um, if you're new here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. You give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps us out. As well as make sure you just drop a comment. You can say anything, even say hi, put a period, doesn't matter. Just drop a comment. It helps us out so much. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a different type of vlog or video or whatever you want to call it. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I am a first generation Canadian. I was born in Canada. Both of my parents are Vincentian, um, but I was born here in Canada, um, whereas my sister was born in St. Vincent as well as my mom, obviously. So um, I, I'm very uh, familiar with Canadian foods. I know how to eat. Vincentian food or Caribbean food, um, but not necessarily know how to make every single thing. So today I'm going to try making curry goat without having any sort of instruction or any ingredient list. So right now I'm about to head to the store and go buy some ingredients and then I'll be back with the rest of the video. So see you later. Okay, so I just got to my car. I'm about to head out and go to the grocery store. I'm hoping that it's actually open right now because it's about 9 o'clock. Um, but you know, because of the whole um, virus that's happening, it's uh, stores have modified hours. So let's see if it'll, they'll be open. Okay, so I just got to the store. Um, it seems like it's open. I did see people inside. I'm not going to bring you guys inside just because it's a very small place um, as well as because of the whole... Um, virus I don't want to be um, bringing the camera in and just you know being in people's faces and stuff like that so I'll see you once I get back from getting what I need to get okay so I'm back from the store I got all the groceries um, you can see me in my house I was gonna film in the car but uh, the camera battery died so I just charged it up a bit um, so I'm gonna show you all of the ingredients that I bought um, mind you I've never made curry goat before I didn't look on the internet to find a recipe but I will well, admit I have made curry chicken before so I'm going off of the basis of how I make the curry chicken I'm hoping it will translate over into the curry goat and boy I didn't know how expensive um, curry goat is I think um, I got about two pounds and that cost me over $25 and I was like I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do this no no I'm um, looking up a recipe because uh, if it doesn't turn out good that's a lot of money to waste you know $20 goes a long way just for me but um here's the here's the stuff that I bought so this is um, all of these bags here so I pulled this out okay. so I got some ginger I don't know, I don't usually put ginger in my curry chicken, but I thought a little bit of ginger might be nice in the curry goat. So here's the curry goat. I went to the butcher shop. Two pounds. As you can see, $26.43. And then just some bread in this bag. Some regular grocery shopping. So, okay, so I went to a grocery store. And then I bought this. I got this and then I also bought like scotch bonnet peppers in this pack here from the same grocery store. Um, I got like a uh, green green onion. Uh, what else is in this bag? Oh and then I decided you know why not go big or go home so I'm gonna try attempt to make um, rice and peas. The thing is though so when I went to the grocery store when I went to the grocery store, oh, and I also got plantain. Uh, plantain, okay. Anyways, I got plantain. But when I went to the grocery store, um, I was looking for the coconut cream, and uh, they didn't have it, so I ended up going to a Caribbean, a Caribbean store, and got the coconut cream here, and then, of course, you know, you have to get some mango. Is it even a Caribbean video if you don't have mango? But obviously it's not the same as getting mango from back home. And then yeah, so I went to the store, the Caribbean store after I went to the grocery store, if it will focus. Um, and um, I got these ones because they look a lot better. Sometimes when you buy the ones from the regular grocery store, they don't have, like it's almost like they're young and it doesn't have the same 
flavor or heat that the normal one would have. I also got fresh thyme from the Caribbean store because um, I thought it would be different maybe. And that's it. I also got two Vitamalt, but um, you know me, I already drank it. Not both of them, but I drank one of them. Um, so I'm going to start by um, cleaning, well not cleaning, I'm going to wash, rinse the meat. I don't know what the process of um, cleaning goat is, but I got the one without the skin on it because I don't want any trouble. And when I went to the store, I'm like, oh, um, I, can I get goat meat, please? And they're like, how much? I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, how am I supposed to know? And then after he's showing me like a bunch of like whole pieces, like the full leg, the rib and everything like that. And then telling me, like, he put the rib with attached to the leg onto the scale. And he's like, yeah, $72. I'm... No, no. I'm like, I, yeah, I don't, I need, I need pieces. Like, I, I don't need that much. How much do you want? I, I, I don't know, maybe two pounds. And then after, that's when I finally got what I wanted. But, yeah, I didn't know it was so hard just to, like, get curry goat, like, just to order it but who knows okay so let me put the camera down put it on a tripod um so that uh, i can show you what i'm doing here so be right back i'm just gonna take the curry goat out and put it into the bowl this in like one go so I'm gonna take off this here because there's some like blue mark I guess when I don't know what that is but I'm gonna just pull that off so that it's not in the meat if you're doing this make sure you get a sharp knife because this knife is not sharp at all Do you guys know why they put these like marks on the the meat? I find that at butchers they always have this mark. I don't know if it's so you know like what grade of cow, like sorry not cow, a goat it is or animal, because how there's like different grades and stuff. Like I don't know what it's for, but um, there seems to be a lot of um, a lot of pieces with it. But I think I'm finally done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some vinegar in here just to do what the vinegar stuff does, you know, to clean it. Uh, that's how black people clean their meat, either vinegar or um, lime or lemon. Um, I'm gonna use vinegar for today just to keep it simple. And I think it also cuts like the freshness of the meat. So I'm gonna wash it right now. Before I add any water to it, I like to um, mix the undiluted vinegar with the meat so that it's uh, extra strength, if you want to call it that. I think this is good now. And then add the water. So I will be cooking it. Um, today because I want it to um, the flavor to kind of soak into the meat so I'm just gonna grab my ingredients to start seasoning. okay so I've gathered all of the ingredients I believe I will be using so we have salt pepper um, Maggie all-purpose seasoning green seasoning um, uh, betta pak curry, um, the ginger that we bought earlier, the green onion that we bought earlier, 
We have garlic here, and then the thyme, and then just an onion. So don't ask me how much I'm putting in here. Uh, you know how it goes. Um, I'm just going to allow the ancestors to speak. Once they say stop, I'm going to stop because I don't have any recipe. I don't have any ingredient list. So um, we'll have to go based off of that. Also, um, I'm going to see if I can get Mama J to try it for me because one, she's from, she was born and raised in St. Vincent as well as she's probably made it before, I don't know, um, as well as she won't know it's my first time. Um, so we'll see what she has to say and you'll get an honest opinion. I'm not going to do one of those where just because it's my food I'm going to try and go mmm, it's immaculate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we want the truth. We want to see if anybody can just pick up and um, learn how to do it. Okay, so I like to start with the salt. I don't know if um, goat is one of those that eats salt or if it's like it retains salt pretty well. Because um, there's some meats where you have to put extra salt because it, it just um, absorbs the salt for some reason or it doesn't, sorry, it doesn't absorb the salt very well or like, I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I'm talking about. But I just added the black pepper. Uh, let's add the all-purpose seasoning. I hate using this. Let me use it. I hate using um, the sprinkler thing because it doesn't come out properly, but I also don't want it to be where I take it off and then the whole thing just comes. Actually, I'm going to do it because this is just taking too much time. If you're taking off the lid like me, make sure you shake it a little bit before you actually start pouring onto the meat because it clumps a little bit, which is why it's so hard to come out of the actual container. Um, then I'm going to be adding the green seasoning right now. So, I think they don't want to come out. So um, for those of you guys who don't know, I started learning how to cook when I was in about grade 5. Grade 5, you'd be about, was it grade 5 or grade 3? Maybe grade 5. You'd be about, okay, let me not say, uh, learn how to cook in the sense where it's like real food and not just eggs or something like that. So I learned how to make real food um, maybe around uh, uh, 10 years old. I learned how to make chicken and stuff like that. Um, fun fact. I used to make my own green seasoning back in the day, not knowing that that's what it was. But my way of seasoning was I always blend up all of my seasoning. So I would take the onion, take the garlic, take the green onion, um, and whatever else I put in there. I can't remember anymore. But I used to put it all in there, blend it up, and then uh, put it into my meat. So my meat seasoning was always fresh. And then we used to have like a plant where we grew like, I guess... It was um, chive, we used to think chive, so then I used to always um, use that, the fresh chive that we grew in the garden. But let me just, so I'm just chopping up the onion very thinly. Am I the only one that like cries a lot, like tears run bad when I cut onion? And then I like to break it up. Sprinkle it over top. Okay, that's enough with the onion. Let me throw this away. Not throw it away, but put it away before it burns my eyes even more. Um, um, my eyes burning me. This is for you guys. I'm killing my eyes for you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna take the garlic now. So for the garlic and ginger, I feel like I want to, oh my gosh, I'm crying. Can you guys see that? Can you see that? Crying. Um, so for the garlic and ginger, I kind of want to grate it so it coats it very well. And then I'm just going to grate it with um, the 
with this side of the grater just so it's really thin really small size really fine no chopped garlic here only grated but I feel like it makes it makes a huge difference when the garlic is actually grated versus um, chopped because it coats the um, the meat a lot better I was actually going to um, cook this today um, but I forgot that I have something to do later on so I'm just gonna use it as an excuse to allow the meat to marinate so I'm literally like putting a small tiny little piece if you can see it it's not focusing oh well you can see it's small I'm gonna peel off the um, skin Same thing as the garlic. Smallest part of the grater and grate the ginger in. Oh, sorry, I also forgot. There's another ingredient before I add the um, before I add the gray. But you just want to cut these into like little circles, I guess. Just cut it down this time. Do you guys have a preference of like which side of the um, a scallion? I have a preference for like the bottom part because I find it to be like crunchy and stuff. I like the crunch. But I think some people like hate the white part or the bottom pieces and they like tend to throw that out but that's like one of my favorites. I think I even prefer it over the um, green part of the green onion or scallion as people call it as well. Almost done. Just going to pour this in. Where did I put my fresh thyme? We're just gonna take a couple, couple sprigs of it. I think this is good. I'm taking about this much. I like to wash it a little bit. And then just chop it up finely on your cutting board so it can coat the goat. The way how I'm talking as if I've made this before, but I'm just giving you guys the instruction just in case it actually turns out good. Uh, so if you guys want to make it out, if you've never made it like me, then you can make it. So just chop it up finely and then put it into, put it in. So here it is. Sprinkle it over top. Okay. Okay. So for me, before I put in the curry, I like to mix in all of the um, previous ingredients so that it's um, so I can actually see like how much curry I want to put in. So I'm just gonna mix in all of these ingredients first. So I mix in everything except for the except for the curry because I just want to make sure that everything. Like, I don't know, I guess I, I season uh, visually, so I like to see that, like, the color that I want is good. I think I want to add um, more all-purpose. So I'm satisfied with that. So now I'm going to add the curry powder. So once again, this is a visual thing. Some a little bit of um, ancestry.com. Okay. So usually I like to mix with my hands, but when it comes to curry, I'm not playing with that. So take grab a spoon and you mix it in. Okay. So I think I'm happy with this here. So this is what it looks like. It's hard to see because it's in a green bowl, but here you go. So now I'm just gonna cover this. Uh, put this in the fridge 
until I'm ready for it tomorrow. And then I'll see you then, ready to cook some curry goat. Good morning, everyone. So it's now the next day. Um, so the curry goat has been uh, marinating for a couple of hours. Um, and then now I'm gonna put some peas to soak. I heard it's good to soak the peas beforehand to make it easier to cook. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna add some water. So I'm going to be using this pressure cooker. So this is the pressure cooker here. And then here's the lid. Um, I don't know if this pressure cooker actually works, but we're gonna try it. Um, and I'm not really too familiar with it. Just let's hope it doesn't explode because I've heard of people um, having it explode. So um, I'm gonna kinda use the same method that I used to cook curry chicken. So um, I'm gonna put oil in the pot. So let's see. I feel like that's good enough. Just enough to coat the pot, the pan. And then um, just make sure it coats the bottom. And then I'm gonna put the curry in to burn to get the color. And then after we'll get the curry coat. Okay, so. That's good. Okay, so this is pretty much good. So you wanna now put the curry goat in. So this is what the meat looks like after sitting for about a little less than a day. I'm gonna save this bowl to add some water after. I'm gonna just stir it around. I don't know if I'm doing this right, so. I'll let you know so you guys can take the recipe, but if not, just ignore everything I said up to now and just do your own thing. Go online, go on Google, search up um, curry goat recipes or some people call it goat curry. Whatever you wanna do, um, you um, go find the recipe and then make it that way. But um, yeah, so I just stirred it around. I wanna make sure that everything comes off of the bottom of the pot. Okay. So this whole time I've had it on high, I think I'm gonna turn it down to medium, I don't know. That's what they always do in those cooking shows, they turn it to medium. Uh, I'm gonna let it boil. Actually, let's turn it back to high. I'm gonna let it boil, turn it down to medium, and then I'll put the lid on. Okay, so it's kinda hard to see, um, just because there's um, a lot of steam, but it's now um, come to a full boil. So I'm gonna um, just turn this down to medium heat. And then time to put the lid on, and then we're gonna let this sit for how I don't know if you're supposed to do pressure cooker on low or on medium, but um, let's do medium. Let's do medium, and then I'm just gonna put the lid on and let it sit there and cook for however long I feel necessary. So now I'm just gonna put the uh, scotch bonnet in so that um, it gives it that little pepper taste. Um, not too hot, I don't want to put it in the beginning because then it's gonna burst and it's gonna be really hot. Um, and I learned a trick with the scotch bonnet is to take a fork and you poke holes in the um, into the sides of it so that it doesn't burst while you're cooking and then it's not like all you're tasting is pepper so I'm gonna do that right now so you want to take it like this and just put the fork through it like that just make a couple holes on the side like that and that should be enough and then you just pop it into the pot so now I'm starting the rice and peas so I have the peas in um, just water 
um, and it's just on the stove so I'm just gonna wait for it to boil and then yeah I'm gonna do the thing okay so for this step all the peas is at the top um, so I'm just gonna add some cold water just to sink the peas back to the bottom I'm gonna need more water one sec okay I'm back bigger and better that's how it should always be okay so I'm gonna pour it in uh, to sink the peas so if you notice all of it was sitting at the top now there's only a few those are the stubborn ones rebellious okay so I added potato to um, the curry goat because um, I don't know people usually put potato in curry goat I know sometimes it goes in curry chicken but I just want to um, thicken up the gravy as well as uh, have that little starch from the um, potato so I'm just stirring it in so that it gets evenly covered by the gravy but um, I've tried a piece and uh, so far I'm liking it I don't know if it's just my bias or whatever but um, it tastes pretty good lots of flavor and um, I'm so sorry I forgot to actually um, check the time of when I uh, put the curry goat on um, to see how long it cooks so I'm assuming it took me about I would say an hour and a half an hour and a half to cook it um, so I'm just gonna put back on the lid I also forgot to mention for the rice and peas um, I added just two cloves of garlic um, while the peas boil um, so it's just boiling and then I'm just gonna wait until it's about halfway cooked and then I'm going to add the uh, coconut cream. Um, I'm going to add some scallion to it. Well, some green onion. And um, yeah, and I'll just continue to let it cook. And then eventually I'll add the rice in. Um, I'm going to add some uh, thyme as well. And uh, some, um, uh, and a scotch bonnet pepper just to finish it off. But yes, this is what we have so far. Okay, so I think the um, peas is about halfway done now, so I'm going to add the coconut cream. So I just opened the package so that it easily comes out or not. It's because I'm trying to use one hand, so it's kind of hard. Hold on. Okay, so I've now added in the uh, coconut cream, some green onion, and some thyme. Ooh, lots of steam. Yes, so there we go. And then I'm just stirring it together. Yeah. And then remember the garlic is already in there, so no need to add more garlic. Okay, so now I've portioned up the rice. Um, obviously, we're gonna wash the rice because you have to wash the rice. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in. I've also um, added salt to the rice and peas and I've added more water. So you want to wash out all the starch from the rice. You see all the water is white, you want to wash it. Okay, so this is what it looks like before I add the rice. I'm adding the scotch bonnet in. So there we go. It's in, off to the races. And then I've also, as I said, I added salt, added water. Uh, here's the peas and then there's everything else that's in there and then here's the washed rice so I'm gonna put that in and then I'm also gonna just add a little bit bit of butter so I'm adding about this much butter into it and then this is what it looks like once the rice is added in so you can see the rice is in there and then just stir it um, yeah but once I finish stirring this up I'm gonna just come back and hopefully we'll be done because I've been in the kitchen for quite a while now and I'm ready to go do something else. So while the um, the rice and peas cooks, um, I just wanted to come and sit down and talk to you guys. I know it seems like it's taking a long time, but I actually started every, I did everything one by one. So I started the curry goat first. Um, and when that was almost finished, that's when I kind of started the rice and peas um, because I wasn't the only one that's cooking in the kitchen as well. Um, but I think doing both together, it shouldn't take that long, maybe about 
three hours which is a long time but I think the longest thing that takes to cook is the rice and peas because when you're cooking kidney beans it takes really long um, so I would say that would be the um, longest time thing to make the curry goat didn't take that long I'm, I'm shocked because I thought it was gonna take like a whole day to cook it um, but uh, I'm just waiting for the rice and peas to be finished and then I'm done but as I said before I learned I started learning how to cook when I was about um, 10 years old um, and I learned how to make chicken uh, pork and turkey I've never attempted goat before this is the first time um, and uh, I think it's very important to learn how to cook because especially if you love good food you don't want to have to depend on going out to restaurants because a lot of times it's inconsistent or they never make it the way you like like have you ever tried stew chicken from like a restaurant and then it just tastes like pure ketchup like I don't like that so for me I like to cook um, and a lot of people don't know that I know how to cook um, so that's why I decided to try this video where I attempt to make this uh, curry goat without actually having a recipe or any instructions because I do believe it's innate in you it's almost like it's passed down through generations and it can be unspoken and you can kind of figure it out so um, that's why I decided and made the decision not to look up any recipe not to get any instruction on how to make it and just attempt to make it um, and see how it goes um, and yeah comment down below uh, what age you learned how to cook or um, if you want to critique my um, curry go go ahead um, let me know what I did wrong or what steps or if you have your own recipe you can post it in the comment section as well I would love to hear it uh, so that the next time if I do make it because goat is so expensive but the next time um, I'll know what I'm actually doing um, but who knows if this recipe turns out good I might not change anything and I'm so sorry that I can't give you any um, like measurements or anything if you are coming to this video um, trying to learn how to cook um, I, I'm sorry I don't cook with measurements um, as well as because I'm not working with the recipe everything I was eyeballing um, so uh, yeah, I can't really give any um, instruction in terms of that, but um, I think it's really good to learn how to eyeball as well, like um, when you're cooking, because you don't have to depend on a recipe, you just know because you know at least with the recipe obviously it stays consistent but I think when you're able to adapt that way it helps a lot so um, I hope you guys uh, do enjoy this video um, it's not done yet so don't tune out but I'll, I'll be right back and with the finished product of the rice and peas with the curry goat so just wait up so here's the finished product of the uh, rice and peas so this is finished um, I didn't get a chance to show you guys, uh, but here's what it looks like once you kind of mix it around. I think it actually looks like rice and peas. Um, but what I didn't show you guys is I actually ended up having to take out some of the water. Um, just because um, I thought the rice took would take a bit longer to cook. Um, and uh, it actually didn't. Um, here's the curry goat here. So that's all finished. But um, yeah, so I had to strain out all the water here. Um, because I thought it was the rice that takes a bit longer to actually cook um, but in actuality it um, it's not that type of rice and it cooked like within 15 minutes of me putting it in so I didn't want the wa the rice to be like super soggy or soft or anything like that so I ended up taking out some of the water to ensure that it's the right consistency so the next time you'll see me is um, I'm gonna be bringing the food for my sister mama Jay says she doesn't want to uh, she doesn't want to be filmed for today um, or should I say she just uh, she's t gonna be tired because she gets home late so I'm gonna um, meet up with Risha and then I'm gonna have her try the food and she'll to say her honest opinion of how she likes it okay so I'm back um, I'm gonna show you the end result of um, the food um, yeah so let me show you the Sun is starting to set so or I'm in a different room so that's why it looks a bit different but uh, here it is focus so there it is get the different angles so there's rice and peas the curry goat and the uh, plantain so yes i'm gonna eat it now so 
I will say that the um the pepper did break up in the pot because I left it in for too long. So it has a little bit of a kick, but it's not bad for the first time. And the next shot you'll see Risha trying it. My sister wanted me to try out her um, rice and peas with curry goat recipe that she that she did. And um, I have some a few comments I would like to make. Uh, about it. As you can see, it looks great. She did a great job with it. Uh, it looks delicious, but I have some a few uh, comments to make uh, about it even before I get started eating it. All right, so um, a few comments about um, her dish. One, um, first off, I think she did a great job. It looks amazing. Um, rice and peas, there is um, a goat and there's even plantains that came with it. Uh, something she got right, similar to a Caribbean restaurant. Um, so I was given a lot of rice, a lot of rice, and barely any meat, which is also typical of, you know, Caribbean restaurants. And there's no gravy, <laughs> barely any gravy, um, which is also typical. Um, so she's getting a lot of things right, as you guys can tell. She's getting a lot of things right when it comes to, um, when it comes to, you know, cooking, <laughs> cooking this. So uh, I believe she didn't. Get, she got very minimal uh, directions. Um, yeah. So let's see. Let's see how this tastes. So first, I'm going to to try the rice and peas. I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of rice and peas. Um, at least like red bean peas. I like the other peas, but. Let's see how it is. Okay. So the rice is really good consistency. A bit on the softer side, which is, I don't mind. Not too hard. Um, I'm now going to sort of try some of the beans. I see this one. I don't know if you guys can see it. And it looks like it uh, went through some hard times. So let's see. <laughs> let's see how it is. That bean went through some hard times, but let's see how like, the rest of it is. Okay, not bad. Some of the beans are a bit hard, but not hard, hard, but I think for me, I would have liked it to be a softer consistency, but I think overall quite good. Um, as I said, I would have liked a little bit more sauce, you know, gravy, but pretty good. Now for the goat and I'm tasting, I'm tasting some heat. I'm tasting a bit of heat here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Goat is very soft. Nice curry flavor. Mm. Not bad. It's pretty good. It's a bit spicy on the spicy side. <laughs> but pretty good nonetheless. Very good. Very, very good. No, you have to get everything out, but spicy. <clears throat> Which I guess it should be. Oh, I'm dropping stuff. So let's continue. Um, I found, huh, look at this. I found a piece of potato. Um, it seems to be the, the only piece. So that would be one of my recommendations is to have more potato for your curry goat, but. Well, very good. Okay, let's try pieces of our plantain. Wow, 
I need water. So should these like little mini slice things. This plant in. It tastes good. All right. Mmm. Quite sweet. I think she added maybe a bit of salt to them. I think I'm tasting a bit of salt. Very good. I like that the, the goat is very soft. Sometimes when you buy goat meat, it's very chewy. So like you can just eat it. Maybe it, was a, it wasn't an old foot goat, it was just like a young foot one. Or she used a pressure cooker. I don't know what she did. I'll see the video, I guess. Mm. That bone was soft enough to chew. So overall, quite good. Only recommendation, one, give me less rice, <laughs> give me more meat, give me more sauce. Um, but I think overall, like, like the quality, the taste of the food and all that, it's very, very good. So if I were to give her a rating out of 10. I'm not going to be Mama J. Mama J can be quite tough with their rating. So I think for her, I would give her an, let's say a nine. I was going to say eight and a half, but I'm like, she's my sister. I'll give her a nine. I'll give her a nine for this because it was very good. It was very, very good. It almost I wouldn't, okay, I can't go that far. I was gonna say it almost reminds me of Auntie Sola, but it's, it's like, it's good. It's not Auntie Sola, Auntie Susan good, but it's delicious. So, yeah, I love it. Thank you, Angelique. If you ever wanted to, me to taste test other stuff, feel free to cook and give it to me and I'll eat. I'm a good at eating. So that's all for today's video. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well as give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've ever made curry goat before or what's your recipe. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a new experience for me and I'm glad I got to go through it with you guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.